Hi, welcome to Worldwide Canadian. I'm Noah Clark, today's special guest host. Today we give a real person's review of the new M1 Mac Mini from Apple. Stick around. Two weeks ago, the folks at Apple released the M1 Mac Mini, the M1 MacBook Air, and the M1 MacBook Pro. All three are considered the lower end of Mac's comp computing, and we got our hands on the M1 Mac Mini. We've been using it for two weeks now, and we have watched all kinds of reviews on the YouTube universe, and every single one has done cold scientific reviews using benchmarks and comparing it to the Apple Intel models that have been on the market for many years. We say, why bother doing another one of those? And like Rene Ritchie of the YouTube fame says, what really matters is the time that it takes to complete a project. That's why we have not done a review until today. We want to start by saying that this is a brand new silicon system on a chip, but it is not the first generation as some of you out there have claimed. Apple has perfected this system on a chip approach since implementing it on the iPhone and iPad and have found success controlling the hardware and software on those devices. If you are a fan of early adoption, this version is for you. If you get bothered by some minor hiccups, then you should look away. First, the claims that this is revolutionary are true for the most part. Our video production has become a lot smoother and faster since we began to produce using this system. We capture video using the iPhone 11 Pro Max. We use that footage which is airdropped to the M1 to edit in Final Cut Pro. And then we add our music, titles, and transitions using the odd bit of B-roll to get our point across. We have found that so far we have had zero problems accomplishing this. For example, this very video you're watching is being and was edited by this workflow. Now, we are experienced because we have been using the iPad Pro 2020 and Luma Fusion since it was released months ago. The only change for us is that we're now able to use the full Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro designed for the M1. And wow, we were impressed. The computer is silent. We are able to manipulate the timeline without any delay, and our renders are happening about as fast as we could have hoped for. We do use the iPad Pro still as a second screen for pre-editing some of the short clips we've taken before we put them on the Mac Mini. We're really blown away by the smoothness and actual happiness factor that this computer has brought to our lives. From script writing, to getting it on the camera, to editing and uploading, we are enjoying it. And some of the videos that might have taken us a few days to finish are coming together within one three hour session. So from that perspective, we're recommending if you are someone using the apps created by Apple to be used on Apple, then this is a great option. And we would not suggest that you wait any longer to obtain this great device. By the way, we've heard about some of the minor Bluetooth issues uh, that some people are uh, experiencing. But please know, if you use the Apple keyboard and the mouse like we do, it's non-existent. We just have had no issues whatsoever. As for the price, a base model with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of super fast solid state drive starts at $899 here in Canada. The mid-range model can be $1600 and you can add another $700 to the price if you want the largest SSD they sell. We're choosing to just add external storage to store the files on, only using the internal SSD for software and editing of the project that we're currently working on. This is a great balance for us and we are more than happy. As for the non-Apple apps like Premiere Pro and the like, they do work using Rosetta 2 and they perform quite well, but we have decided to stick with the truly amazing suite of software provided to us by Apple. We have not been given anything that we are using and are not paid for our review so we feel we can give you truth about how we feel about it. If you like this video, please click on the thumbs up, and if not, we'll grudgingly accept a thumbs down. Comment and consider subscribing, and if you click that bell, you'll get a notification when we upload any new videos. Well, that's it for me. I'll see you next time here on Worldwide Canadian. That's it for me. See you next time here on Worldwide Canadian.